Hi, this is Nancy Herald, and welcome to my show, High Road to Humanity. In every episode, I tell you powerful true stories filled with great wisdom that you can use in your own life as you strive for a higher road to travel. My featured guests will have their own unique stories to tell that enlighten your mind and your soul. So kick back, relax, and learn the secret to success when you take the high road. Hi, this is Nancy Yearout, and welcome to High Road to Humanity. And I have a fabulous guest here today. J.M. DeBoard is here, and we're going to talk about dreams. And, you know, this is going to be a really interesting subject. He's got some really cool dreams in here. He's got some scary dreams, so I guess it's appropriate for Halloween that I'm going to ask him about some of these scary dreams that are in there. Um, so you people who have nightmares out there, um, he'll be here to answer those questions. But listen, I want to just thank everybody who supports High Road to Humanity. I want to let everybody know that I do have the new VIP subscription to my website. It's $5.99. You can ask me two questions per month, um, and you can have access to all my awesome videos that I'm putting out there. I just did uh, one yesterday on faith. And so it's actually on the front of my website if you want to check it out and kind of see what the VIP subscription is all about. And if you want a psychic reading, go to my website, nancyyearout.com and just click on the book button. Now, I have a fabulous gentleman here today. J.M. DeBoard is here and he is an author of three books about dreams, including the best-selling Dream Interpretation Dictionary. Now, he uh, demystifies dream interpretation and empowers readers to tap into their innate abilities to discover the meaning and significance of their dreams. This is going to be fun, you guys. So millions of people know him as Red Owl since 2010. He's been a voice of knowledge and wisdom and community moderator of the world's largest online home for dream sharing dreams, reddit.com. This is cool. So DeBoard is a popular media personality. He's appeared as an expert guest on programs all over the world such as Coast to Coast AM and Share Wisdom TV and in publications like New York Magazine and the Boston Globe. Now, DeBoard is the creator of Red Owl's Dream School at dreamschool.net. I think that's cool. I checked it out. The online home for courses in dream interpretation. Now, his dynamic teachings have enlightened more than 4,000 students in 200 countries. He's a member of the Association for the Study of Dreams and the Association for Research and Enlightenment. He lives in Tucson, Arizona with his wife, Lisa, and two cats. That's awesome. And you can find him online at J.M. DeBoard, and that's D-E-B-O-R-D.com. Hey, welcome, J.M., to High Road to Humanity. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you for having me. It's funny hearing yourself in an introduction like that. You're like, wait, is that really me? Yeah. You know, <laughs> But um, uh, the one thing I can say for sure is I really do live in Tucson. You can tell by the uh, palm tree behind me um, that uh, that's part of the uh, the environment here. So um, and those those are the Catalina Mountains right behind me there. So I'm hoping that the background gives your listeners um, and viewers uh, something to um uh, entertain them as we talk about dreams. Yeah, no, it's a beautiful background. Well, I have your book here, you guys. Um, if you're watching me on YouTube, I'm holding it up, you guys. And it's uh, the one that I have is Red Owl's Crash Course in Dream Interpretation. And this was really interesting. But what I'd like to know is your story. How did you start interpreting dreams? You know, it started as a journey of healing for me because I was a college student at the University of Cincinnati. I was studying English and then I switched into political science. And um, I found that the, there was something that was lacking from what I was doing, the path that I was seeing going forward in life. Uh, there, there was me, it was missing something for me. And I got turned on to um, the uh, psychology of Carl Jung, which uses dreams as a way of going within yourself to find what the voices in there are contributing and what they're saying. So I also found that there were some parts of myself from my teenage years that came out of that time of my life kind of fractured and I needed to put myself back together again. So I ran across a mentor, Larry Pesavento. He's a, a counselor and psychotherapist. And I started going to see him and he turned me on to this way of being able to use dreams as um, guides for living your life, for answering mm -hmm. questions, uh, okay. for healing. 
And so that started me off on a journey. It's now almost 30 years later. You can tell by the- Oh my God, seriously. And, uh, you know, the, the wear and tear, but, um, it, and over that time, I, I got very deeply into, uh, personal practice of understanding my dreams, um, exploring them, and then also into the psychology of it. And what I found is, is that after all that time, I had pulled together everything that Carl Jung and Alfred Adler and Sigmund Freud, and I'm just naming off names from, you know, big names in dream psychology. There have been right. many, of course, contemporary since then. Mm -hmm. um, and what I found is, is that all those years that it took me to absorb that knowledge, understand it and apply it to my dream life in a practical sort of way, that I could take it and simplify it so that anybody, you, you don't have to go through all the stuff that I did. I can teach you a quick way of getting into your dream so that you have the information that you need so that you can wake up tomorrow, start applying my three simple facts and three simple steps, and mm -hmm. you can start interpreting your dreams. Because Nancy, you might have found this too, when you say, oh, I want to learn how to interpret my dreams. Where do you start? Yeah. Or you find good sources, but they disagree with each other on things. Or it's written for a medical or a psychological audience, people who've got a background in studying psychology, and you jump into the deep end and you're like, what are these people talking about? You know? And well, have you put the spiritual and the scientific kind of together? Is that what you've done? Yeah. I think I, it's when you're going within yourself to explore your dreams, you're mm -hmm. really exploring the spiritual side of yourself. Of the inside. Yeah. The inner self. Well, and I just have to ask you, you know, did that really wake you up? I guess it did. You know, that kind of raised your vibration and cause we all go in, see right now we're all going inward. I guess, you know, that, and everybody's raising their vibration, but you did this a long time ago. Cause you learned how to go inward a long time ago. Yeah. And in a way I was sort of forced to, because I felt yeah. like there was going to be something that was going to be missing from my life that if I didn't do this, that I would go off on this career path in this life path that would take me on a very kind of conventional road that didn't make me go within myself. I was, you know, extroverted and external and social oriented. So my life was more about, you know, making my stamp on the world and, you know, having this career where I would make the money and gain the acclaim and do all these things that were not oriented towards an inner life. Yeah. <laughs> I've been there. I can remember thinking, I want my own airplane. <laughs> yeah. I thought, hmm. <laughs> so anyway, rewind. I, I know what you're saying. And then what, what catapulted you? I mean, okay. So you're on this path. I mean, and you're looking to make the cash and you're, you're not looking at anything spiritual. What was the final thing that made you look within what happened? Necessity and healing and finding that there was something within me that wouldn't allow me to stop. To, it wouldn't allow me to continue avoiding it. Okay. You know, that, that the call it the still small voice, the little voice, the voice Your of gut? soul of gut, you know, of yeah. God. There was okay. something that was calling to me and my life is radically different than what it was before I went on to this path of using dreams to get deeper within myself. I, I can see that there was this fork in the road and there was a Jason who went off and lived another life that he had formulated from his, you know, from those early years and formulate an idea about yourself and what you want from life. And then there's a Jason that went off on this other path. I mean, I'm the, I'm a moder a community, community moderator of the dream subreddit of the Edgar Casey subreddit of past lives and reincarnation and Carl Jung. I'm, I lead these communities of people who are like-minded and want to discuss and learn more about these subjects. These are things that were not on my radar in the least. I know. <laughs> I think it's awesome. Well, congratulations, man. I mean, <laughs> hasn't your life changed since you've connected? I mean, don't you feel like a totally different person and don't you feel more joyful now? That's yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, I feel like I'm contributing something that was always within me. You know, I've, I, I know the reality of past lives and uh, through regression and through my dreams and through being smacked right upside the head with stuff that was undeniable to me that this is a real thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is a culmination of a process of all these different lives that I've led that have now armed me with the information and most importantly, the experience so that now I can be someone who helps others on their path. 
I'm not here to tell anyone else what to do. I'm here to give them the tools and information they need to figure it out for themselves. And this is one of the beauties about dreams is that like you can go to a guru and ask them for advice about your life. And oftentimes that information kind of passes through you and it doesn't stick because it's, if it doesn't resonate deeply within you, then there's nothing to stick to. Your dreams are coming from within that source and they're helping you to reflect on yourself and your life and giving you the information that you need to make your own decisions as a conscious being. This is one of the things that Carl Jung really contributed to understanding the psychology of dreams and the psychology of spirituality is is that these things are welling up from within you and they're not there to overpower you. They need you to stand strong as a conscious being, to be firm in yourself so that you can take on these energies and not be overwhelmed by them. So there's always this process of saying, well, the unconscious dreaming spirit side is saying one thing, but I need to take that into myself as a conscious being and decide what to do with it. Right. Otherwise, otherwise you're a robot, you know, you're just kind of following orders. You need to be a conscious being with this so that you can take what you learn and really apply it and run with it and be creative with it. That's a big thing that dreams do for you is they help you find not just creativity in the artistic sense, but creativity in the life sense. You create a life for yourself, right? That's creativity. And this is your dreams are really going to focus in on hard on, but you need to be able to to decode the symbolic language of dreams. And that's where my books and my courses and other teachers. They come in. Yeah. And I hope we'll talk about some of that today. One thing I really liked about this on the back of the book, I cracked up. I had had to smile at the very end of the, uh, the, you know, little synopsis about the book. It says no prior experience required. (laughs) And I laughed, but then I opened your book. And and if you don't mind, I mean, we got three or four minutes before we go to commercial break. Let's go through the first, um, you know, because you give in here three simple facts, three simple steps, you know, for dreams. Um, Do you mind if I read them out? Yeah, go ahead. Or I yeah. can you do, or, you do yeah, talk about them. I want you to talk about it because you guys, you can interpret your own dreams and he tells you how. And the cool thing about this book, what I was going to say is I really like it because you make it simple. Yeah. It's not like all drawn out and, you know, you got to go through this, you got to go through that. I mean, it's three simple facts about dreams. And then he gives you the three simple steps to interpret your dreams. So the first simple fact is, um, know subconsciously what your dreams mean you know subconsciously what your dreams mean that's true isn't it because we all kind of know we all kind of know talk about that well there's a simple reason why that's a true statement and i start with it because it arms people with the the you you know like they can start venturing into dream interpretation and they're like well i'm not sure what i'm doing i don't know if i can do this but if they go wait a minute i know what my dreams mean already because you create them subconsciously, yeah. but yeah. They're, they're not beamed in from the mothership. You know, your dreams are part of you and they arise from an unconscious part of you, but they're still yours and you still create them. Right. So this arms you with that surety. You go, well, wait a minute. If I created my dreams, it means that I must know what they mean. Mm-hmm. And if I know what they mean, then that means that dream interpretation is a process of remembering what I already know. And the steps of dream interpretation and the tools and methods and techniques are really things that jog your memory. They help you to remember, they help you to access the information that's subconscious within you. So when you use something like association technique, which started with Dr. Freud and it was expanded on by Dr. Jung and all Mm -hmm. these others, it's still in use today. A very common therapeutic and dream work tool is association method. What you're doing is you're taking a symbol from your dream and you're thinking off the top of your head and you go, well, what are my thoughts and feelings and memories? What are my associations? You know, Mm -hmm. if I, if I see a spider in my dream, well, what do I associate it or a cat, which by the way, your cat just came into dream. I know she's talking to me. (laughs) You might might think, you know, a cat is, is affectionate, you know, a cat is a companion. Okay. Well, how does that apply to the symbol or does it? And Mm -hmm. what you're doing is you're going, it's, it's helping you to jog your memory because the words that come to mind and the thoughts and memories and stuff are things that can help lead you into the dream so that you can understand what the dreaming mind was thinking when it created that symbol. It had an idea when it brings your cat into the dream, it has an idea behind it. 
for one person I know who had a lot of dreams about her cats getting out of her house, it was because her cats are things that she cares very deeply about and right. she protects them from getting outside and, you know, coyotes eating them. Or so something. it was a fear. It was it, a fear. It was a fear, yeah. but it also connected with the dreams then using that idea, the dreams connect with the subject of what she takes care of and her fears that things will get out of hand if she's not constantly vigilant. It's all connected. It's all connected. Hey, we got to go to commercial break because I'd like to use this for the podcast. I'm here today with J.M. DeBoard. The book we're talking about today is Red Owl's Crash Course in Dream Interpretation. This is Nancy Yerald. This is High Road to Humanity, and we will be right back. Hi, this is Nancy Earl. This is High Road to Humanity. I'm here today with J.M. DeBoard, and we're talking about dreams and how to interpret your dreams. His book is really cool, you guys, and I have to read this, and then I'll have him tell us what the deal is. So this is what it says. Creatures outside her bedroom window, they come at night. I dream it's nighttime, and I'm in my bedroom when I see creepy creatures floating outside my bedroom window. They want to come in but I won't let them. Yeah. This was a young woman who came to uh, Reddit, dreams.reddit.com, where I'm right. at. I've been a community moderator for a decade now there. And people come and they share their dreams and I give them feedback on them. Not all the dreams that are shared there. It's a massive yeah. community, 250,000 subscribers. But I get this opportunity to engage with people about their dreams. And then when yeah. we find really great examples, I use them in my books. Love so th this was a young woman who, when she's, you know, she's in her home, in her bedroom, and they are replicating her daily reality. The, this is a first clue that the dream is connecting with something that has to do with her present thoughts and feelings that maybe she's experiencing while she is in that place. Because right. the dream could put her in an imaginary home and an imaginary bedroom and say something different, but it's putting, in her, it's putting her in her bedroom. But then it's venturing from reality into imaginary by putting these floating creatures yeah. outside her bedroom window and they're knocking like, hey, can I come in? Can I come in? And she won't let them in. So there's an idea there that the creatures are a symbol. The dream has put it into the context of a story and you understand the symbolic action of what is wanting to come in. Okay, she's inside of her home. Inside of her personal space is the idea. So then you start to kind of decoding further and you go, well, what's trying to get in that you're trying to keep out? Here's where the personal context really comes into play because okay. she had broken up with her boyfriend. I think it was about a month before their before the dream, mm -hmm. and she had kind of gone on and 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 was trying to ignore the feelings that were batting around in her by just making herself busy. But at the oh, end of the day, I the see. The day, she's in her bedroom in her bed where she's now relaxed and she's not preoccupied. So what's waiting for her? It's those feelings that she hasn't dealt with that are mm. from the breakup. You know, the, the sadness and the sense of loss and things like that. She's sad about the breakup. Yeah. So they are, those feelings are waiting for her to not be so preoccupied so that they can try to get into her space, but she doesn't want them in her space. So right. in the dream, she keeps the windows locked so that the creatures stay out. Right. But, when you decode the symbolism of a dream, you can then relate it to what's going on in yourself, the parallels right. with yourself in your life. And it's not so hard, but you have to understand what the symbol means. When right. you look at the creatures, you look at it in context and you go, yeah, okay, they're outside the bedroom. Why are they outside the window? Why is she keeping them out? So it gives me as a dream explorer or mm -hmm. dream worker, interpretator, yes. And, I, and, and interpretation is kind of a loaded word because uh -oh. you, well, and I just want to make this point real quick is because when you interpret someone's dream, you're taking the power out of their hands to figure it out for themselves. Okay. And what I try to do is teach people how to figure it out by helping them to decode the symbolism oh. and give them information and knowledge. And if I say, if I say, Hey honey, what's going on that you're, you know, what are you trying to keep out of mm -hmm. your personal space? What are you trying to right. avoid? feelings and thoughts. And she goes, well, I just broke up with my boyfriend a month ago and I've been trying to avoid it. I right. asked the question in the right way that helps her figure it out for herself. So she interpreted the dream because she made the connections between the symbolism and her life. And That's amazing. I, 
I just helped her to do it. So that's great, though. But you solved her problem, and now she doesn't. I mean, here's the thing: we're we're energetic souls, and you know, I know how all this stuff works, like you do, and it's all emotions. And so she was holding on to those emotions, and the only way they could be released is through her dream state, because she wouldn't do it consciously. So it had to come in subconsciously. You know, I just want to say something to you as you're talking. I don't re always remember my dreams, but when I do, it's, I remember it really well. And I think it's a way I've always felt like dreams were a way that we work things out during the night. Like we live during the day and then at night we work it all out. Does that make sense? Yeah. You're there's dreaming is a multi-layered phenomena. And mm -hmm. so you, you, you have a base layer that happens, which is the sorting of memories. And then the next layer, which is the sorting of emotions. And your dreams take those emotions and turn them into dream memory from emotional memory. These are the two primary things that are happening and it, uh, happening in your dreams. And it's very well established from the study of dreams and also from neuroscience. Right. We can look inside the brain and see what's happening as you're sleeping. So then well, that's you, true. So it, it, what it's doing is it's going through the memories from the day and it's saying, I want to, the dreaming mind is saying, I want to collate this. I want to pull the information out that's the most important that might help me, that might help me as a person to, to advance and to grow. And I want to look at the things that haven't been dealt with. I want to look at the troublesome bits. I want to help to digest and metabolize. These are two words that um, are very important for understanding dreams. If you would say, well, what are dreams and what are they doing? You go, dreams are psychological digestion and emotional and spiritual metabolism. They're taking the things that it's, it's taking these things that come into you. Mm -hmm. you. If you compare it to digestion, you put food into you and it goes through this whole process. Right, it's processing it's it. Like the colon, all this. Well, yeah. the same thing happens while you're dreaming, except for it's psychological and emotional and spiritual. Mm -hmm. This is the digestion and metabolizing that goes on instead of food we we're actually digesting and metabolizing the other experiences we have of life. And it's putting together this picture of who you are. Then there's a secondary process that goes on where a deeper part of yourself comes into play. And it takes these little things and it turns them into stories like simulated environments right. to, to grow and advance as a conscious being. I love it. That was a good explanation. Thank you for that, for explaining. I just want to, well, there's a couple more stories in here I want to talk about. I want you to talk about the interpretation. But as you're um, talking, I'm wondering about people who try to do some programming before they go to sleep at night. Now, personally, I always connect with God and I'll say, hey, give me any messages I need. Bring them on in tonight. I bring in that intention. Or a lot of people, you know, uh, will do like affirmations or something before they go. I'm big on affirmations. So we'll talk about that just a minute, if you would. Sure. Um, the a lot of people think that the process of remembering dreams uh, starts in the morning after you wake up, but it's really, it's the, it begins as you're getting ready for bed. Okay. And you want to consciously recognize the fact that A, you're going to sleep and B, that you, your dreams are important to you. And so that's where setting intention comes into play, because if you want to remember dreams in the morning, you need to begin by setting the intention the night before. Oh, okay. it, help, it helps to put it in your thoughts so that it's running in the background as you're dreaming and you're more aware of the fact that you're dreaming. And what that does is it helps to pull those elusive dream memories into a longer term memory storage that's more accessible for you when you wake up in the morning. It also puts that thought in your in your mind so that the first thing you think about when you wake up in the morning is your dreams. Yeah, what it, I dream. Okay, so this is cool. Thank you. Because I've never done that before. Thank you. And it really helps you. You, of course, if you're going to interpret dreams, you have to remember them first. And it's very important for people to have that information for them because a lot of people have trouble with recalling their dreams. And if they, if I they do, don't, yeah. Do before you go to bed, set your intention. My dreams are, I'm going to be dreaming. My dreams are important. I want to remember them. Thank you for the help remembering my dreams. And then you go through the night of dreaming and you wake up in the morning and it's the first thing on your mind. You remind yourself, hey, I was just dreaming. It's important for me to remember. What do I recall? Even gotcha. if you don't have memories of specific memories from your dreams, analyze what's going on in your feelings and your emotions. Oftentimes those are residue left over from the dream state and that can pull you into, the, it can help to pull those memories out. Oh, okay. And 
practice. If you keep doing it, you will get better. Dream recall is a skill like anything else. You practice, mm -hmm. you get better with it. But if you don't practice it, you won't get any. You won't get it. And I never have because I never really remembered. Now I have another question. I can remember uh, there's so many times where, you know, you've been you're having a dream and it's a great dream. And then you wake up and then you're like, oh. Yeah. And then it feels like it's gone. And then you can't go back and you're like, wait, or you get up to go to the bathroom. <laughs> That's me. Yeah. yeah. Get up and go to the bathroom. And then I come back and I'm like, oh, I got to pick up where I left off. And then you can't pick up where you left off. Why does that happen? Well, dream memories are gossamer. They're like spider webs and they can, okay. it, they're long and elastic, but they can easily tear. And so okay. what's, it, it's a special type of dream memory is a special type of memory yeah. that it's it's short term memory and it, it gets overwritten as soon as you start thinking about new things. So you wake up in the morning and you start thinking about something. You check your notifications on your mm -hmm. phone. Right. So a bedmate starts talking to you about something. Oh, this right. is what we got to do today. Hey, hey, hey. Well, what that's doing is it's overwriting the dream memory with new memories. Mm -hmm. The old memory is underneath it, but it becomes kind of like um if you if you remember the old style hard drives, if your hard yeah. drive crashed you could use a special software to kind of recover what was on it but it now okay. is a much it's a much more drawn out process because you're you're having to apply special techniques well right. this is the same thing with dream memories is if they start getting overwritten you can get to them but they they might be overwritten and here's my number one advice wow. get back get back in a sleep position it's a physical cue to help you because you were laying on your side at, right. or, or whatever right. you were asleep, your body was in a certain position as you mm -hmm. were, as you were dreaming. Well, if you're now upright, then you're not in the same body position, get back in that body position okay. and it will help to cue the memories from your dreams. Nancy, there are some people who recall their dreams best when they go to bed at night, they remember the dreams from the previous night because they're what now back, they're in their sleep position. They're getting That's their mind. Crazy. It's called. It's, it's called a sleep. practice, isn't it? It's a practice. Yeah, it yeah. really and is. It, and it's not hard to do. And this is where my book comes in handy because I've learned all these things from the study of dreams and dream psychology, right, and right. science. And I've taken all these facts and I've put them together. That book you're holding in your hand is only a hundred pages. You can read it in three hours. I know, but there's so much information. We got to go to commercial break. But when we come back, you guys, we're going to ask him. Here's here's the headline, or here's the the uh, title of the chapter my deceased mom told me i'll join her in a few years yeah that's a good one all right this is nancy Earth. this is high road to humanity and we'll be right back <laughs> this is nancy you this is high road to humanity i'm here today with jm deboard hey if people want to get in touch with you how do they get in touch with you jm jmdeboard.com is the best way to start um and look for the name radal which you can see on my zoom uh name here yeah. uh that's my name, my username at Reddit, and it's kind of stuck, and I used it as a moniker. So, okay. um, yeah, and it's on my book, of course, Radal's Crash Course in Dream Interpretation. Yeah. There's kind of an idea there that I take a more of a of a fun approach to dream interpretation as opposed to the sort of stodgy. Like, yeah, right, thank you. Talk about, talk about your childhood, Dr. Yeah. Boyd, you know. Yeah. Um, which is which is useful sometimes, but I want I want people to get excited about their dream lives because well yeah no you've actually made me think about it <laughs> like okay well yeah. can we read this one can you tell I'm gonna read this and then I want you to tell if it's okay what happened so my deceased mom told me I'll join her in a few years so here's what he says my mom or what the person says my mom passed away 15 months ago but only recently has she been appearing in my dreams. I've had three of these dreams. They're all pretty dull, but it's helping me heal. We usually just chat and she always looks very tired. The last dream was a few nights ago. In it, I told her I missed her and she said, well, casually drinking tea. I know, but you can't join me yet. But when you're about 33, maybe 34, yeah, this this, terif this terrified me oh my God. so much that I woke up soon after and I haven't seen her since in my dreams. Do I have a reason to be afraid here? That would be scary. Yeah. And I'm this, sorry. Is where, this is where I feel like my mission in life is really coming in because I understand those dreams and I've been able to help people to get over the fear that's brought up. I mean, imagine that you're 30 years old and your deceased mom says, yeah, you'll be joining me in a few years. I and know. you start, what is all that? Kinds of start coming to mind like, you know, 
Well, here was the thing that the first thing about the dream is look at her mom's appearance. She's tired and she's yeah. out. And yeah. the dreamer says, that's how my mom looked before she died. And then she starts connecting other memories. And she says, you know, my mom died young. Why? Because she wore herself out. And so what does it mean then that she'll be joining her mom in a few years? She's recognizing that she's wearing herself out. The dreamer okay. is okay. following in mom's footsteps that way by wearing herself out, not getting the rest that she needs. And what does that mean for her in the long run? It means she really could be giving herself an early ticket, you know, yeah. out. And so that's, that's what the dream really means. Her mom in the dream is not her spiritual mom. Her mom is an image wrapped around a message. Her okay. mom is the perfect person to deliver the message. Why? Because mom is the one who wore herself out and daughter is now seeing herself doing the same thing. Gotcha. And she's telling herself, kiddo, you still have time. You don't have to follow your mom's footsteps to the grave. Mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. yourself out. But you need to just start doing something about this now. So that's yeah. really what the dream means. Well, two different things, like, because a lot of people have dreams where a deceased loved one will come in and give you a message, but this was completely different. How interesting to realize that there was that analogy. Okay, well, you've got some more. Do you mind if I ask? Hey, yeah, go ahead. Oh my God, these are great. This is like a Halloween show, man. <laughs> this way. In what? The, the book uses these examples. Chapter one is the three simple facts and three simple steps. Right. And, and then all the rest of the chapters, uh, except for the appendixes, are using example dreams like this, yeah. where I say, here's the dream. Here's how we analyzed it. This is what you can learn from it and apply it to your dream life. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's an awesome book. Um, my best friend, Back from the Dead. Uh, am I losing, losing you again, is what you say. In my dream, I'm driving along in my car like normal, when suddenly my best friend, who died six months ago, appeared in the back seat. I'm so happy she's back and want to know what happened, how it happened. But then she fades away and I cry. I don't want to lose you again. Wow. Yeah. This is a very common type of dream for people who have experienced the loss of lost. a friend, a loved one, a family member. Okay. And there's something to understand from um, that's going on while you're dreaming is it's called neuroplasticity. And what it means, it's a fancy word that means rewiring the brain. Your brain nightly is going through a process of collating memories. And then it's also looking at, well, there may be memories from the past that were in short-term active memory that are not needed anymore. And those, those would be memories associated with her friend. Why doesn't she need them anymore? Because her friend has passed on and she's not having a daily interaction or, you know, she's not an active part of, of her life anymore. Mm -hmm. And so what the dream is saying is, is that her, her memory center associated with the friend that was taking up resources can now be rewired so that her memories are archived the, of the friend. Okay. And but this is the thing is when it happens while you're dreaming, it's turned into memory. Neuroplasticity only happens while you're dreaming, by the way. So uh, memory processing is a big part of what's happening. The imagery is in response to what's happening in your brain in mm -hmm. part. This is one layer to a multi-layered thing. So just one part of it. So what's happening is, is that her friend appears as a character in the story because it represents the memory center associated with her friend. And when the friend starts fading away, it's fading memory. The, the, the wiring in the brain is, re, it's, it's actually occurring as she's dreaming. Those parts of the memory centers with all those neural pathways in it, the neural mm -hmm. pathways are changing and giving priority to other parts of, of the brain. So that's why like when someone passes, you know, you, you try not to forget them, but you start to forget, isn't it? Yes, that's exactly what's going on. And I see that a lot with people who dream, they'll suddenly someone who was a loved one from the past that comes in and yeah. then there's something distressing where the person is like, guess what, I'm dying again. You know, like, and what's happening is, is the memory is dying. That's, that's all that's happening. It's not the real person. 
this is I've seen this before. Interesting. In Interesting. Where people teach dream interpretation, and they they will say that every visitation dream is actually the spirit of the deceased. And I say no, no, no mm -hmm. that is that is rare actually comparatively. It does happen, but it's rare comparatively. And here's how you can tell the difference. The spirits of the deceased are in another form of existence where there is no death, disease, deprivation. There's no- Right, they're happy problem. when you see they're, them, right? They're, they're always happy. They're always positive. They always have good messages and there's always a feeling of love. Yeah, they're, and they're younger. They're, they're, yeah, and they're always in their prime. I know, so I know. Pointing that out. So yeah. this, this is one of the ways you can tell. And by the way, if you go to dreams123.net and you put in deceased loved one in the search box, mm -hmm. You can, you can find something I wrote about it. I have a checklist of nine ways to tell the difference between yeah. a, a visitation, a real spiritual visitation dream, mm -hmm. and the much more common, ordinary, symbolic dream that uses the image of a deceased loved one as a character in a story. This yeah. is very important. And if we go back to my simple steps about my simple facts about dreams, right? Simple fact number two about dreams is that dreams are stories. Stories mm -hmm. involve characters. The characters are actors. So when you see a dream character, you really need to think in terms of an actor that's playing a role and the script is written subconsciously. You can figure out a lot about a dream by analyzing the roles that the actors play, including mm -hmm. you as an actor in the story, which right. Nancy explains sometimes why you do weird things in dreams and you go, I would never do that, you know? <laughs> yeah. you are, there you are, hey, Halloween theme, and there you are with the ax, right? And you're, ah, 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 ah. Oh God. and then you wake up and you're like, I'm an ax murderer, what did no, I do? You know? I'm really glad you explained this whole thing about deceased loved ones because, and I agree with you completely, you know, and I'll tell you how I know, well, I do, I just know, but I'm a psychic. But then when my father passed, the day my dad passed, I was in my living room. I've told the story on the show, but I'll tell you. And I was really close to my dad and um, I didn't, he, he died and I didn't get to see him. I got to say goodbye, like via FaceTime, but that's it. But I went into the living room and I looked up and he was standing there and he was young. Yeah. And he had on uh, jeans and a shirt rolled up and he did the wave like, hey, Nance. And that was a total blessing because he wanted to tell me that he was okay. And I got to see him, which was cool, you know, and that I've never gotten to see. I feel, I know I have all that clear cognizance. I'm an empath and all that stuff, but I've never gotten to see before, but I got to see him. And so I think what you said, a lot of people think when they dream, this is my opinion only. I think a lot of people, because I hear this all the time, oh, my dead father or my dead mother came to me. I don't think they are. I don't think that. I think they're around us because I know they're around us because I know when my mom or my sister or whoever has passed is around. But I think the dream, like you say, is more of um, a symbolism. Yeah. Usually that's what the character is, is it's a symbol. You know what I'm wrapped, saying though? It's wrapped in an image. Yeah. But, are, but there are times that the it's more than that. And this is where we get into the deeper layers of dreaming is what can happen sometimes is, is that the dream is interfacing with something larger. Yeah, well, yeah. Usually what it's interfacing with is memory, emotion, right. uh, you know, cognitive processes, um, things like that. But as, as that stuff gets done earlier in the night, later in the night, you can start having these other experiences where the dream in the dreaming mind is now starting to pull in information from other sources. And those mm -hmm. can include spiritual, astral, um, God sources. I mean, it's information because I feel like, okay, I just yeah. want to say this really quick. We got two minutes because I feel like I get a lot of information at night. Yeah. Well, there is a layer to the dreaming mind and to the psyche. Um, Carl Jung called it the collective unconscious. And mm -hmm. it's a collective mind. It's like a database. And we can access that database as we're dreaming. And when you have something that you want to know more about, or it's information that you need, you're not consciously aware of that you need it, but you need it. Then while you're dreaming, this deeper processing can happen where it pulls in the information that you need. There have been amazing discoveries that have been made through dreams. Right. Einstein's theory of relativity came to him through right. a dream. Right. Um, the, the, uh, the, um, the sewing machine, Elias Howe, invented it 
from a dream. dream. Right. So that's what I'm saying. So I'm going to rewind and ask you one more time. <laughs> Just because. So have you, has there been any, because we got to go to commercial break, but have there been any experiments done? Just because I've talked to people like you who have said, you know, I asked God for the answer before or higher power or whatever you want to call it source before I go to sleep. And then I got the answer. Do you yeah. hear that a lot? Yeah. And in fact, um, I have a podcast called The Dreams That Shape Us. Oh, we yeah, that's right. Stories. We have several stories of that interviews with people who have had those experiences. Yeah. One woman and Nancy, this was fabulous. One woman. Right. Was so go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> the day before she had been told she worked at the Wall Street Journal in their graphic design department. Okay. And they came to her and they said, hey, your contract up is up for renewal. And she said, I would like to have a raise. And they said, no. She was really stunned by it. And they said, and by the way, by tomorrow morning, you need to tell us whether you want to renew your contract. Oh, and wow. so she went to bed that night and she was like, as she's getting ready for bed, she says, you know, I really need to know is, should I go back to the job or, you know, should I make a leap of faith? By the way, she lives in Manhattan. And when you change jobs, when you live in such a competitive and expensive yeah. place, it's a big deal, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. So you got rent to pay, bills to pay, you know? So mm -hmm. she had a dream that night that G she sees Jesus and he has arms made of intense fire and Jesus looks at her and he says, on to bigger things. I and love it. Yeah. Um, Linda Schiller had a dream where she was getting ready to adopt a daughter and she wanted to be able to sleep on it first, which really means dream on it. She went to bed and she had a dream that told her that that girl, that daughter who was in China at the time and Linda was in Boston, that daughter was the right one for her and she needed to know that and she pulled in the information from right. her from the dream source to be able to advise her on it and the dream source had the other information that she needed which right. was is this person is this girl this young baby the right baby for you she had no way of knowing that right. because she was going through an adoption agency an overseas adoption agency so you mm -hmm. can get information yes. from dreams Start the first time, Nancy, the first time it happens, you will never forget it. Would oh, you I know, I know. Let me go to commercial break and we'll talk more about it when we come back. I'm a little bit over. Hey, you guys, I'm here today with J.M. DeBoard. His book is Red Owl's Crash Course in Dream Interpretation. This is Nancy Yerout. This is High Road to Humanity. And we'll be right back. Let's go. Hi, this is Nancy Yerout. This is High Road to Humanity. I'm here today with J.M. DeBoard. We're having a really cool conversation about dreams. Let's continue on and talk about bringing in information from a higher source, a higher power. What, what do you want to tell us? Boy, this is one, this is a subject that really gets people going, especially, you know, I, I'm a teacher of this subject and I give workshops and seminars and stuff like that. And cool. I can talk about all this, you know, dream psychology and Carl Jung and my simple steps for dream interpretation and all this. But yeah. what really gets people going is when I bring in these stories about people who've had these extraordinary dreams that mm -hmm. change their lives. And right. one of them, there is a mathematician. Um, he died about 100 years ago. His name is Srinivasa Ramanujan. He was from India, and he got all of his mathematical education from a textbook that he found as a teenager. He taught himself mathematics, and then he had these dreams that there was a goddess that would, the, down the screen, as in he's looking like a movie screen in the dream, he would see blood drip down, which I realize sounds kind of weird, but remember, blood is sort of vitality and life and energy, too. Mm -hmm. And then he would see these theorems and equations that would be written by the goddess on on the screen he would wake up and he would write it all down he is one of the most famous mathematicians of all time right. he blew the minds when he wrote to the people at, he wrote to people at oxford and he said hey you know i'm he, i think he was maybe in his late teens or early 20s at the time and he wrote to some of the best minds in the world most famous mathematicians in the world mm -hmm. and he said will you review my work and they were astounded because he was figuring out things about mathematics, theorems and formulas and equations that the best minds in the world had to, they couldn't wrap their mind around it. 
It took Einstein level people to look at his work and say, this guy actually is telling us things that are, it's brand new in mathematics. Mm -hmm. it, makes, it makes you guys look like amateurs. And he was an untrained, a poor man from India who got all this information from a goddess. In his he day. connected. Yeah, he connected. You know, it's really interesting. I'm really glad we're talking about this because I learned about this from talking to other people who are very intelligent, who told me they got their information from asking before they went to sleep. Yeah. asking a higher power before they went. So I started doing it. God, what information you want me to know? And then I go to sleep. Yeah. And it, it, it can talk about preparing for the next day by getting a download of information that you need. The dream space is the perfect place to do it in. And you can set your intention and do it. And it changes your life when you get the response because you know it can happen. A lot of times you go into this kind of work and you go, well, I haven't experienced it, so I don't know if it's true. Mm -hmm. I remember the first time I had a past life memory that came to me spontaneously, wasn't doing a meditation, I wasn't doing a regression, wasn't doing anything. I had a little voice that came into my head that said, go meditate. And I was like, okay, little voice, I'll go meditate. It was my third time that day, you know, meditating. I'm like, okay, let's go. Are you kidding me? <laughs> And I fall back onto the bed and my mind's eye is pulled out of my skull and pulled me into a scene so that I could see myself in a past life and view it like watching a movie. Once oh I gosh. had that experience, the doubt, you know, because I had, you know, I wasn't really sure about it. But after that, I was like, yeah, I've experienced it. So this is the same thing with dream work. When right. you get the response that you were asking for, and it seems to come from this higher source, then your life has changed forever after. Yeah. And it's helpful. I mean, and it's interesting, you know, I'm so glad you're doing this work. Tell me some more success stories. I, you've got some more stories in here that we can talk about, or are there some stories that you just would like to share with us? Sure. I want to go to simple fact number three about dreams is that talk about it. symbolism. And this is very important. There are two sides to dream interpretation. One side is to translate the symbolism. And I say translate because symbolism is a language and you're translating it from what the dream told you and the way that it said it to language that you can understand. Okay. The other side of it is analysis of the story. The okay. dream the dream is an experience that you give to yourself. And this is very important for understanding dreams and approaching the process of, of to interpretation. Right. Is why did you give yourself the experience of the dream? So when you go into approaching a dream and understanding it, you want to say, well, this was an experience I created subconsciously, but I created it. It's a story told to me using symbolism. So I translate the symbolism, I analyze the story, and then I reflect on it and go, why did I give myself this experience? Right. When you have these really big dream experiences, sometimes like, you know, deceased loved one comes to visit you in a dream. Yeah. Big experience, not an well, yeah. Experience. Tell the story about the the boy who dreamed about his mom and the car and the ice. Oh yeah, this is okay. So that's a good example of this. Yeah, thank you. Um, so there, this was again at Reddit.com where I'm Radal, the moderator. I interacted with this guy. He was a teenager, and he had this dream. He said, "Well, I was in a pickup truck. This is my mom's pickup truck, her real truck, and she's driving. Mm -hmm. And the road is really snowy, and mom is driving way too fast, and I'm getting nervous. I'm like, I know mom. What is gonna, you know, disaster is waiting around the corner." Sure enough, they come to a bridge. Mom misses the bridge, drives right out onto an icy lake, right? So they're in the middle of this frozen lake. The ice breaks and the, and the truck plunges underneath the, into the frozen, you know, semi-frozen right. water, right? So he like rescues mom, gets her to shore. And he's like, mom, you're a bad driver, right? So that's kind of the bad, that's kind of the end of the dream. Like you could have gotten us killed. What are you thinking? Yeah. So we reflect on the dream and go, well, unless this is replaying like it's a precognitive dream saying that, you know, you should really watch out for icy roads in your future. Yeah. <laughs> we can assume this is metaphorical and symbolic. Let's see what it really says. So we start with mom is, uh, is driving her truck. It means she's in control. Nancy, a lot of people have dreams about being in, in control. control. Yeah. And that's what the dream is about. And then it brings in different things like the speed of the vehicle is the speed of your life. The control you have of the vehicle is the control you have of your emotions, your life, of a situation within it, a circumstance. Mm -hmm. And then, so it brings, the, this is all saying something symbolically and metaphorically. The icy road, it implies treacherous conditions, right? Then oh, yeah. mom, mom drives 
now there's one word that really summarizes everything that we see happen in the dream involving mom and it's bad decisions mom is yeah. a bad, mom is a bad decision maker it's a bad oh decision God. to drive on an icy road quickly and weave all over the road it's a bad decision to miss the bridge and drive out onto ice and it didn't happen intentionally that's the thing right. mom didn't deliberately do it well, here's what's going on in the young man's life. He's a teenager. He's in the passenger seat with his mom. Mom is in control of the direction they go together in life, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the metaphor is perfect. He's a passenger right. on the road of life with mom, but it's a treacherous road because mom is a bad decision maker and she gets herself into trouble. She's not doing it on purpose. It's just mom's life is kind of a mess and he's there experiencing it with her. Mm -hmm. and, then he, and then he has to rescue her from her own bad decisions and the messes that she makes for herself. Right. The, dream, the dream shows it as rescuing her from her sinking truck. It's saving her in a sense. And that's the habitual role that he plays in life. So the dream took all of this information, pulled it together and told a succinct, powerful metaphorical story that helps him to understand the situation better. And then look at the very end, Nancy. What do you think it means? He when pulls her out, yeah. And he gets to shore and he says, mom, you're a bad driver. What is he really saying? You have, yeah, you make bad decisions or yeah. Oh, mom, you're a yeah. bad maker. Yeah. What, one of these days you could get us killed in the sense of- well, How know, did it help him though? Yeah. <laughs> in the end, I mean, how did it help the poor guy? I mean, how did it help him? He, he sees it for what it really is, maybe. He sees it for what it is. And then he can also understand his role better and he can be conscious about it. Because as a teenager to this point in his life, he's been doing it in automatic subconscious response. That's I'm going to rescue mom because I'm her son. I love her. My mom, he said that his mom was a wonderful person. She just was, her life was a mess. And so when he has the stream and he understands it, he can say, do I want to continue playing this role? And if I do, I'm going to do it consciously instead of mm -hmm. as a, as a, as a unconscious person. thing that he's been doing. Yeah, yeah, that's yep. crazy. There was another one in here, if you don't mind, we got a few more minutes um, about, a, what was it? Where the guy cheated on his, what was it? I'm sorry. I think it was where the guy cheated or something on the girl. I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let me tell you about this. This is fascinating. Yeah, okay. When you're you're processing memories as you're sleeping and dreaming, and the one of the ways that you can get into dream interpretation, one of the first things that I go to is I go, do does the imagery in the dream and the situation and story that it tells parallel what's going on in the person in life. from their recent memories? Or maybe is the dream stepping back to show a bigger picture and point mm -hmm. out patterns and habits and things like that? This is important. So you begin with, does the content of the dream somehow reflect recent memories? And so this is what, this is what he dreamed. He had a dream that he hooks up with this girl and goes back to her place. It's a night of boom, boom, bang, bang, right? Mm -hmm. She tells him before they get into bed together, she says, look, I just recently broke up with my boyfriend, so it's okay for us to be together. Mm -hmm. He gets the next morning after the deed is done, he finds out, hey, wait a minute, you hadn't broken up with him. So when we were together, you were cheating. It yeah. means I, I made, I instigated this with you and I'm part of something that I didn't want to, I wouldn't have gotten involved with it if I would have known. Right. So we start there's like, well, this is an interesting story. What does this relate to in your life? And for, to make a long story short, what had happened was just prior to the dream, he had been in a class where he was taking a test and he thought he could use his notes. And the teacher comes up, sees him with his notebook open and says, you're cheating, dude. And so they end up having a conference and he thinks the hammer is about to come down on him because he's just been caught cheating. And he explains to the professor teacher, look, I, I really thought that I could use notes. And he, the professor believed him because he was a good student and had good grades and had never, it didn't and happen before. Anything yeah. Anything differently. So yeah. cheating with the girl unintentionally relates to cheating on a test unintentionally. The memories, the dream took the memories, told a story about it and processed it. And it took the idea of cheating in the relationship sense to mean cheating in the test sense. Mm -hmm. This is something that dreams often do is they take things and there, there are words that we use that have other definitions to them, mm -hmm. like cheat. You know, cheat can mean playing unfair. Cheat can mean taking advantage of something. Cheat can mm -hmm. mean 
you know, uh, exploiting vulnerabilities and things like that. The dream will show cheating in the relationship sense, which by the way, is a very common dream theme and also commonly misunderstood, really? but it actually means cheating in some other alternative definition of it. And that is an important part of helping you to understand what the dream really means. That's really interesting. Hey, we're out of time. I'm really glad you came to join me. We've been talking for about an hour. Hey, his book is called Red Owl's Crash Course in Dream Interpretation. And then you have more books. They can find them on Amazon, I'm sure, right? Yeah, the Dream Interpretation Dictionary, Symbol, Signs, and Meanings. Uh, that is a huge bestseller in the, in the category of dreams. And what I did is I took a dictionary format and turned it into a dream interpretation guide. So I embed the information in the um uh, in the entries so you mm -hmm. can look up cheat in the dream dictionary oh well and it tells you okay and it also provides examples i think the one i just gave you was one i ran across after i wrote that book but there's yeah. still the knowledge and information and examples that i use in the dictionary can teach you the same things that i've just shared here in this interview yeah i'll have to have you i have to have you back i'll have to get the book and have you back okay. on the show yeah hey thanks for joining us today i truly appreciate it hey you guys this is nancy you're all this is High Road to Humanity. Everybody have a great week and God bless. Take care. Connect the dots and keep the motion. Can achieve your goal. Let's hit the high road. Hey, you guys, join me next week on The High Road for more stories filled with wisdom, love, and hope for our future. Have a fabulous week and know that by staying on The High Road, you will make it to your destination. Visit my website, nancyyearout.com, where you can book a private session to learn how to tap into your own abilities. And check out my YouTube channel. It's Nancy Yearout's High Road to Humanity. you can achieve your goal. Let's hit the high